We're now on Daf Mem Ches Hamid Beis, and hopefully, hopefully, completing the fifth parak of Nidorim, Parak Hashut. Who gave the Havi Lebra? A person was unhappy with the behavior and the conduct of his son. Davi Shomit Kipe de Kitana. He was a thief. The son. He would steal what's called Agudos Shalpishtan. Now, if you want to know what Aguda shall pishtan, you have to learn a little bit more of Bob Metzia, Perakele Metzias. But in any event, uh, this son was a thief. Asrina Lenichselin. This reminds me of uh, Perak Ben Soramora, where the father brings his own son in front of Bezdin to register his complaint that his son is a thief. But in this case, what the father does is he generates an Iser Madir on to his son as a neder, that his son will not be able to inherit his father when his father dies. So the colleagues and friends of this father who took this neder, they try to calm him down and straighten it at him out. He says, Hamulay, listen, man, do you realize what you're doing? What's going to be if your grandson, so let's say, Yaakov takes a neder on his son, Ruvain, but Ruvain eventually might have a son by the name of Hanoch, who turns out to be the great uh, Talmud Chacham. And now you've cut off Hanoch from the Yerusha. He won't be able to benefit from any of the Nechassim because you cut out his father, Ruvain, from the Yerusha. Amalahon, at this point, the Madir, we called him... Uh, Ruvain calms down, so to speak, takes a second look at it. He says, you know what? You're making a very good point. And therefore, Likne Adain, I want to give you a Kenyan uh, that would include my son and therefore his son, even though my son is not acting properly. But I want to add the following stipulation. My son will not be able to inherit my possessions and benefit in any way from them, except in one way. There's only one expression and manifestation of the Kenyan that I will allow you, my son, Ruven, to enjoy the benefits of my possessions. And that is, Ihavi Bar Bri that if your grandson, my grandson, your son, will turn out to be a Talmud Chacham, then I will allow you to inherit my possession so that you can now transfer ownership over to my grandson, who's a Talmud Chacham. My. Now, this introduces the famous sugi of Kni al Menasla Haknos. So let's say a few words of introduction. When your Maknas something to a Kona, the Das Kona has it, that he now takes over all tashmishim, all use of the object that he's now acquiring. But if a person receives a gift in such a way that the only thing he can do with this gift, by virtue of the conditions of the nose, is that he can give it to someone else, that's called kni al haknos, is amri bepumpedi soi, kni al haknos, who called kni al haknos lo kani. If you don't give in this matana some sort of rights of ownership to the macabre, to the recipient, other than the fact that he can now transfer it over to someone else, but he has no benefit whatsoever in receiving the object, that gift is not a valid gift. Because hakna requires haknas tashmishin. And you're not giving him any tashmishin. Now, this presents a tremendous problem, says Naran, because of a famous sugya in Kedusha Davom, a place called Matona Masla Haksir. Because if Ruben gives to Shimon a Matona Masla Haksir, then Shimon cannot enjoy any benefit from this Matona. He just simply has to give it back. And yet the Gemara establishes there in Kedusha Davom that this is a valid Kenyan. Lechor should be Kenya al Manasla Haknas. But the answer is no. In Matona Manasa Hatzir, he has full use. The Makabel, the recipient, has full benefit from the object until he has to give it back. So for that period of time, it's his, 
But here we're talking about a case where the recipient gets no benefit whatsoever, not, not today and not tomorrow. But now we have the dissenting view of Rav Nach. Nachman Omar, I'm going to prove to you that Kni al is definitely valid. Because if Kni al I'm sorry, is not a valid Kenyan, then you've undermined the entire entity of Kenyan Sudar, which, by the way, we learned from the Tanakh itself, from Rus. Because we Paskin, in a machlokas in Bometzia Daf Mem Zion between Rav and Levi, that we use Kalov Shel Machne. I'm sorry. Against it, that we use Caleb Shal Conan. So, what that means is that if Ruvain is being machna something to Shimon, then Shimon will give a, a suda of his over to Ruvain, but he gets it back. And therefore, Sudra is always by definition because the Kone will give the machna a suda. And get it back. And yet that's a valid Kenyan. Omar of Ashi. Rav Ashi rejects the analogy of Rav Nachman from Kenyan Sudar. Uman Lema Lechad Sudra. Etofus Lelo Mitfus. First, I have one objection to you. What happens if the Mocha, the Makna, decides that he's holding on to the Sudar and he refuses to give it back? He, lo- he fell in love with that, that kerchief. It keeps him warm in the cold New York winters here. His low mitfis? It's not his? Okay, the understanding as a general rule is that the Caleb Shalkona given over to the Machna is returned by the Machna to the Kona. But if the Machna decides he wants to take it for himself, then he can hoard it for himself and no one can force him to give it back. So it's not like Kni al is a valid Kenyan. The Odin, furthermore, even if you're going to argue that Sudra is Kni al Haknos, and the Makna under all circumstances has an absolute monetary obligation to return the Sudra to the Kona, nevertheless, Ukni min Hashta. Immediately, when the Kona gives the Mokhar a Sudar, before the mocha returns that suda to the kona, the mocha has his chus and his kona that suda. And that's called a kinyam action. But in this case, halein nixin dardain, where the father was makne, the nechassim to his son, and for what purposes? Only that in event that he has a son who's a tamad chacham, he should be able to transfer ownership over to his son, liema saikonei. At what point in time does the Av have Das and full-fledged intention to be Makna to his son? Ah, It's only when his son proves to have a son who's a Talmud Chachma, not before that, is then Lichi Havi at that moment in time when the Ben Vaxtois, a Talmud Chacham, at that point, the Makna gives the Suda, returns it back to the Kona. So at the time of the Chalos Kenyan, the, the, the Kona cannot own the object in the case of Kenyan Manasla Hakmas. That's not the same in the case of Kenyan Suda. Amalei Ravala of Nachman, again, another objection against Rav Nachman about Kenyan Manasla Hakmas. What was the case of Matnas Beishchori? He gave him a gift. And the reason he gave him a gift is so that the recipient would invite his father to eat the Suda of the Nesuit. The Loka Kani, and the Mishnah says that's not a valid Kenyan. And that's why it generates an Easter Mudra Anah. So you see clearly that the makabal of a chatz and a suda, when it was given to him only for one purpose, is not a valid Kenyan. 
And certainly, therefore, that proves that, that Kniel Menas Lahaknos is not Chal. Now, when you ask a kasha to someone as great as Rav Nachman, you can imagine that at different times, Rav Nachman would offer different answers. He had a very creative mind. Sigmar says, Zimnin Omele, sometimes Rav Nachman would respond to Rava to differentiate between Matnas be, Beis Chorin, where the Makabal is not, is not uh, Kone, and a normal case of Kniyal Menasach. We see clearly that the intention here is to allow his father to eat from the Suda. He's not giving the Suda away. The Suda is worth, as we said before, hon to our fault. So there was no das to be makna the chutz in the Suda. But Zimnin, on other occasions, Rav Nachman had a different answer up his sleeve. And Omer Lay, Rav Nach would answer the Rav's kasha. That our Mishnah reflects the Shita Rabbi Eliezer. He the Omer Afilu Vitor Osu Bemudrano. Now, I remembered Rabbi Eliezer quoted back on Daflamid Beis with regard to Vitor, like for example, Trisa Betocha Chotzer, like a person owns a chutz, he left he lets anyone go through the chutzer if they need it as a uh, as a shortcut. He doesn't have any loss from it. It's an chaser. And that's called Vitor. In Dini Mominos, I'm allowed, I'm permitted to be, benefit from your objects, in this case from your chutzer, because I know you're not Machbid, you couldn't care less. That's called Vitor. And Vitor is mutter in dine mominos, meaning no one could claim you're a gazlon when there's a situation of vitur and derech b'nei odom regilim levater v'edam akpidim Nevertheless, Rabbi Eliezer holds also b'mudr hanoah. If you're madr hanoah against your friend, he's not allowed to walk into your field even though people are not makbid and even though in dine mominos there is no Xalus moment over here when you enter into the field. But now we introduce a whole other element to the equation. That's the Isar Neder. And we're going to see that in Mudra No, there's an Isar Neder where there is no Din Momon, where there's no Kpeda, where it's Vitor. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now, the hard part, and this is where I was like racking my brains last night is what this has to do with Kniyal Menas Lahaknos. Rav Nachman, in his second answer, Zimnin, is offering another justification to his position that in Kniyal Menas Lahaknos, even though the Kenyan is valid, Nevertheless, there still remains an Iser Mudra Anon. And that's based on Vitu. And what it means is, again, I'll say it one way and then I'll brush it up a little bit and do a better job, hopefully. It means that something which has no Din Mamon in Choshen Mishpa terms, nevertheless, it's considered Mamon as far as Mudra no is concerned. So Vitor is not considered Mamon when I tromps through your field and take a shortcut. You have no Tvias Mamon on me because people are not mocked. It's like the Gemara at the beginning of Pesachim about Sufe Te'enim and Sufe Anovin. You know, those unripened uh, fruits on the tree where... Uh, it's part of Minamasa because it's automatically Hefka. You you aren't mafkir, but you, no one's mocked on these little uh, unripened fruits that'll never ripen. So no one's mocked in the case of Vitor. So in Didi Mominos, you have no claim. And yet, in the Dorim, we're going to say, like Rabbi Lesa, that, that, that 
Vitor is also. And if I'm mad to you in Hano, and you're not allowed to get any Hano that's that 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 is a Hanas Mamon from my Nechassim, then you can't walk through my my backyard as a, as a shortcut. Teresa's regular, even though it's Vitor. Okay, now let's apply that here in the case of Kni Almanas Lahaknos. It's not a valid Kenyan. But yet in the Durham, even though in Dini Mominos it would not stand up in the law, in the court of law, in Mudra, I know it's going to be also. We're going to consider it as if the Matana was not a valid Matana to be Mafkia, to undermine and uproot the Isa Mudra, no. Even though in Dini Mominos, this would not be considered Mamon. I- I'm sorry, what it means is the Matana would be a Matana, and therefore it's not that you're benefiting from the Mamon of the Madi. And this is all based on Rabbi Eliezer, because Rabbi Eliezer was the breakthrough Shita that said that even though in Dini Mominos, Vitor is not considered Mamon. Nevertheless, in Dini Nidorim, we're going to be Machmir, and the Nether is going to be Chal even on a Vitor situation. But again, it still remains a bit of a jump over here. It's a leap of faith. The analogy is not, uh, shall I say, ironclad. It's not tight. All right, let's see if we can finish the Perak. Tanan, we learned. In the safe of our Mishnah, in my base chorin, Amruchachon Kol Matona Sheinim Ekdisha Teimukdesh Sheinim Matona, and we have a principle that whenever we read a Mishnah, if the Mishnah has the word Kol, it's always coming to be Marbe. So, what is the Mishnah coming to be Marbe? And the Gemara wants to turn around the tables against Rav Nachman. Kol Asuye Mai, my love. La suye ha milsa de shadia bekipi. Right, we had the case of the grandfather Yaakov, who was Madir, his son Ruvain from his Nechassim, because Ruvain was a no good thief. And then Yaakov turns around, he wants to give a gift. And allow his son, Ruvain, to own his possession so that he, Ruvain, could in turn bequeath these possessions to his son, Hanoch, who turns out to be a great Torah scholar. And the Mishnah, by adding the word call, is telling us that that kind of arrangement is not a valid hakna. It's not a Kenyan. Why? Because it's Kni Almanas Lahaknos. I'm only giving my son because I'm hoping that he will transfer ownership of these Nechasim to his son, who's a great scholar. And now the Gemara rejects this proof in order to defend Rav Nachman. That the word kol in the Mishnah is not coming to include Kni Almanas Lahachnos and tell you that that's not considered a valid matona, but rather Suye Lishna Basra the Shmaita Rav. The Rebu here is coming to the second Lishna of Rava, back on Daphne Mchesam and Aleph, that Matnas Beis Chorin, even if the Nosei doesn't use the language of Tanai, but rather he just simply says, and I'm hoping that you'll invite my father to eat. Nevertheless, we look at the das of the Nosein and the Makabel, we understand that they're just doing this facade, this fake kind of Kenyan, just in order to circumvent the law of Mudrano, and that's not a matana. And do you recall that we added to boot the Sudasim of because he would not give away his whole Sudas Nesuin, you know, uh, and he doesn't have a, a real serious Kavona for a Matana. So therefore, the Gemara is now postulating that Rav Nachman would answer to you that although it's true, 
that Kni al-Manas haknos is a valid Kenyan, and the word kol here is not coming to be marbe less or beneder Kni al-Manas haknos but rather like the Lishna Basa de Rova, in a case where he explicitly says, I'm giving you this matona for that purpose, that you will feed my father. And we know for sure that he has no intention of giving away that suda as a matona. Hajan Olecha, Perek Hashutfer, and tomorrow, Bli Neder, will start the sixth Perek Kol Hanodim and Amavushal. So for tomorrow, here's your homework assignment. Bring any sort of cookbooks. I think, Rabbi, you like to cook, no? If, if I remember correctly, good. We're going to talk about cooking. We're going to talk about different vegetables and how to eat them and what they do to your stomach and what danger they might have. We're really entering into a culinary parak. We'll be there for tomorrow.